Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. And we would like to say welcome and greetings to each and every one of you out there in Radio Land. And, of course, you are tuned in to WKGM, your ministry station. And for those who do not know who I am, of course, uh, I am your favorite pastor's favorite pastor, Pastor Rob Scarborough. And we would like to welcome all of our faithful listeners that tune in to us each and every Thursday at 12 noon. And, uh, of course, all of those of you who tune in to us Saturdays at 3 p.m. Again, we want to give a shout out and thanks to everyone that tunes in to us each and every Saturday at 3 p.m. And, of course, today is Thursday, and that's every Thursday at 12 noon. You are uh, in the right place at the right time. Uh, I don't want to prolong the situation. I did travel all the way here to be with you live. I do not count it as a light thing, but thank you so much. But it is a privilege, uh, and it is a blessing that we would come all the way here just to talk to you live. I, I feel as though there's a gap there's a communication gap between the ministers, between those who are leaders, between those who are the information givers and the information receivers. And I feel like the Bible, well, it's not what I feel. The Bible says that knowledge shall be found in the priest's lips. If you are in a church that you're not allowed to ask a question, if you're in a ministry, you cannot ask the pastor a question or uh, or. <clears throat> find out and inquire information of what he's teaching, how he got what he's teaching, then you're probably in the wrong place. I assure you that we ought to be ready to give an answer for the hope that lies within. Well, we're not going to prolong any further, so if you're out there listening in your vehicles, get on your phones, uh, that's your cell phones or what have you, and call somebody, tell them to call everybody and tell them to tell anybody that your favorite pastor's favorite pastor is back on the air Again, let's open the phone lines up and get a few callers today who may just be checking in or maybe you just want to say I'm listening. Maybe you've never called before, but you're listening and you want us to know that we're not wasting our time, that we're not traveling this distance from Richmond, Virginia to be here live just because. Uh, I love the people. I love to interact with the people. And uh, last but not least, of course, we thank God for our most faithful detractors and enemies that also are addicted to this ministry. We do thank God for you. The phone lines are open at 357-9546. That's right, area code 757-357-9546. You can feel free to call us. The phone lines are open again at 357-9546 or 622-622. Nine five four six. Feel free to give us a call out there in Radio Land to check in with your questions, your comments, or maybe you just want to say hello on this wonderful, wonderful uh, day of, I believe it's March the 17th. So, again, to each and every one of you out there, feel free to call me. Now, I, I want to continue to, uh, um, as the Bible would say, I beseech you, brethren, that you all would begin to take uh, some sort of initiative, that you've been missing a plethora of information, that you have been starved of the truth. And I want to begin to examine what has been taught, uh, what has been not only taught, but uh, what is being fed through mainstream Christendom. Uh, One of the things I would like to say is that Uh, The church has been lied to. And that's something that you commonly hear uh, taught and preached uh, over these airwaves, at least during this particular uh, time zone. However, I want to appeal to the listener today that that is not making the uh, uh, taking the initiative and making the step, making the leap to come out to the the underground, and I'm going to say it's no longer underground, the Bible class, our Bible class, which is each and every Thursday. Again, that's each and every Thursday, 730. And, uh, of course, it is held at 1570 North Military Highway, the Holiday Inn. Again, that's the Holiday Inn, 1570 North Military Highway. So to each of you that are out there in Radio Land, we want to... uh, uh, urge you, we, we beg you, we, uh, oh my goodness, we beseech you, brethren, 
that you would make it a thing of importance to know the truth, that the truth might set men free. If you're out there in Radio Land, the phone lines are quiet today. So uh, I don't know if y'all on vacation, but if y'all are, y'all should have let me know because I would love to take mine right along with you. But if you're out there in Radio Land, get on the phones, let me know that you're there, and we'll go from um, there. Now, we've been discussing a a, a variety of topics, uh, but we've been under the umbrella in our classes of will God save the whole world? And I know that's a hard piece for some of you all to swallow, but I assure you that we do teach that Jesus is the Savior of the world. Uh, I believe we have our first caller, 357-9546. Let's go to the phone lines and check in. Caller, you're on the air. Oh, uh, hey, hey, my favorite pastor. What's going on? How are you? I'm, I'm Brother Perry calling from North Carolina. Yes, welcome. And, and, and look here, look look here, Brother Pastor. Yes, sir. I, I've had, I came in on your radio station a little late last time. Okay. But I had one or two people that listened at you, and them guys told me, man, where have he been all this time? They tell me what time he come on, because I want to hear him. <laughs> so <laughs> they are listening to you today, because look, they were, so, they were so overwhelmed with the information that you were putting out there. And look, would you do one thing for me, Pastor, and I'm going to hang up? Yes, sir, anything. Would, would you just uh, lighten on, enlighten on a little bit about last week about the rapture? Because I've always thought myself that uh, we would be taken out before the rapture. Mm-hmm. But after hearing what you said, would you please just let us know a little bit more about it? You ain't got to spend a lot of time on just. You, you, highlight a little you, bit more for I'm gonna hang up and listen up. Oh, thank okay, you so much, Pastor. brother. Thank you all the way from North Carolina, and shout out to all of your brothers that are listening, uh, and that have been turned on by your recommendation. I want to give a great hello and shout out to all of you all out in Carolina, and I'm trying to get out that way. I would love to get out that way to share by way of radio. We need to have radio broadcast uh, out in the Carolinas. Amen. Um, I will touch again on the so-called rapture and when, because that's a major key in the church that's taught wrong. You, you, you specified that you thought that there would be a rapture and I'm, and and I'm, I am assuming that you mean before uh, the great tribulation. We got another caller. Okay. Before the great tribulation. And uh, before I deal with the return of Christ, which is not a rapture, by the way, at all. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening, the brother just called and raised a great question or uh, topic of conversation that does involve you coming out tonight to get better information, more than what I could ever talk about just over the airways in this short time. I am recommending that you go back and read the scriptures. The Bible has never, and I repeat, has never, ever, ever, ever taught... um, anything about a rapture there is no such thing in the scriptures as a rapture there are those who have taken the scriptures twisted the scriptures to their own destruction and in doing so they have come up uh with a theory called the rapture now what i want you to do is give you a little bit some some different information because One of the major issues is if I'm telling you today that the rapture is not a scriptural principle, if it's not a scriptural uh, premise, if you do not find evidence or roots or, or, or that it does not originate from the scriptures, then I have to, it would help if I can tell you where did it come from. Okay. Number one, I want you all who do research. Those of you who will go and do some research, even while I'm talking, there's a young girl by the name of Mary. I believe it's pardon me here. Give or take Mary McDougal, something of that nature, McDougal, McDonald, something up in there, who was a young Catholic girl. Okay. And if you go back and research history, she is uh, widely accepted as the person who is behind the theory of the rapture. Let me say that again. A young Catholic girl, and I believe her name was Mary McDougall or McDonald, uh, somewhere in there, is credited by most to be the originator of the so-called rapture. Now, a lot of you so-called Christians don't know that. 
All you know is that for as long as you've been living, your grandmother and your grandmother's grandmother's preacher, pastor, have told you Jesus is coming back and he's going to rapture the church. And, I, and, and let me just go a little deeper because the lie that's told in your church, that's right, you just listening out there, the lie that's told in your church and in many of our churches and the lie that I believed and I taught or that I, I believe rather uh, is that the world will get worse that Jesus will have to come back, rapture his church, and that after rapturing, watch this, after rapturing his church, the saints, those who are saved, he's going to leave behind the wicked. And when he leaves behind the wicked, the wicked will be faced with a great tribulation period. They call it the great tribulation that they believe that is said to be seven years that seven years uh is what they call the great tribulation period and where they will be forced to either have their heads chopped off or they won't be able to eat buy or sell uh, any of the the necessities now at that time they can take a stand for christ almost like a la a last stand uh, to somehow, I guess, obtain salvation. That's the way it's put in the Christian church. Meanwhile, all of the Christians will be up in heaven floating around on clouds uh, with Charmin tissue wrapped around them and wings. Well, let me just tell you today, ladies and gentlemen, everything that you just heard me describe is what your preacher preaches when he's telling you about Jesus coming back in the rapture. I need you to understand that you need to stop wasting time. You need to stop putting off what's important and you need to come out Thursday nights. That's right. Tonight, the Lord's willing, we'll be there. 1570 North Military Highway, Holiday Inn. That's right. 730 where we can show you piece by piece that there, number one, let's go through the list, that there is no rapture, number one. Number two, that the rapture was created by a little girl who was afraid that she would be doomed to hell which was a Catholic uh, young lady, all right? And she believed that the rapture would be uh, a, a, a rescue, if you will. Second of all, I'm here to tell you that Jesus is coming back. That's the, that, that's the truth. He, he will return. But when he returns, he's not taking some people that are good and leaving some people that are bad behind for a so-called rapture. As a matter of fact, I'm here to tell you that it will be the saints that will endure great tribulation. I didn't call it the great tribulation. There's a difference. And it is not a seven-year period as popular uh, opinion believes. All of these things are flat-out lies. And I hope you're listening to the sound of my voice when I tell you that not one of you preachers out there, ministers, deacons, diocese, popes, whatever your title may be, that can prove otherwise. We got another call? Let's take some calls today, and I'll get back to that. It's all wrapped into Catholicism and a lot of other pagan-rooted uh, doctrinal beliefs. And let's go to the phone lines. 357-9546. Caller, you're on the air. God bless you. Good God bless you, Pastor. How Welcome. you doing today? Wonderful. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Well, this is Norfolk checking in. Plus, I have a comment and a question. Okay. Uh, the comment is... Uh, just like as you were saying, uh, this rapture thing came about in exactly 1832 by this young lady you were speaking about. But there was a pastor standing by listening to her talking about it, and he just took what she was saying and ran with it. And ever since then, this is when the rapture first came into existence. So, so you've done some research, absolutely, and you you've taken it upon yourself, and you are bearing witness that there in fact is uh, a young lady and I, I think her name is Mary who uh, is widely counted as responsible for the whole uh, the whole theory of a rapture because before 1832 no one has ever spoke about a rapture so now this is interesting because you're making a great point now if nobody spoke about the rapture until the 1800s and you gave the number 1832, then what is it that Paul preached? What is it that John the Baptist preached? What is it that the apostles taught? 
because if no one spoke about it up until 1800s, then all of you all that believe in the rapture, well, let me just tell you the truth. You're all too late. You're all too late. Your, 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 your religion, your ideas, your concepts, your, your beliefs are late. They're wrong, erroneous. And I'm telling you, we need to go back and find out what Thessalonians mean. I'm not going to get into that today. Why it says they should be caught up. And that's where they think they get the word rapture coming from. The word is rap is though. Rap is though. And what that's talking about is a fetching together or fetching up. I, I, they need to be taught about what those things mean. And then they need to understand that God is not going to rescue the saints from going through tribulation. That in fact, the saints are saved in tribulation. And I'll explain that. And many, many, many more things. Brother, you raised a good point, and I thank you for calling and doing your due diligence and research so people don't think we're just making this stuff up. Amen. But, Pastor, I had one, one other question. I mean, a question. Oh, well, this question is something I would appreciate that you could elaborate on. All right. And that's the, uh, in, um, in, I think it's in John's chapter 10, uh, before you get to, where it said, um, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you um, that you would be saved. Okay. And 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 um, I know you subscribe to. We are being saved. You're not you're not saved, but you are being saved. So, it, it, could you elaborate on what exactly is that scripture saying? If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Well, let me just drop a little jewel to everybody that's listening to tell you that nine out of ten church folks don't even know what salvation is. First of all, the scriptures that say that we're going to be saved that the church uses are that scripture you just named, Romans ten nine. Also, there's a famous is one Acts 2 21 that says whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved uh, and it really says it this way and it shall come to pass that if uh, any will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved let me say this first of all the Bible never said if you did anything or any of any of those things happen to you you are saved why does the church Quote Romans 10, 9 uh, to say, if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart, I am saved. It doesn't say that. It says shall be. Shall be lets me know that it's in the future. It's a future tense. If it's a future tense, then why do people think that they are saved? Well, let me just say this. There's not one scripture in the Bible that refers to somebody in the past tense as already being saved. You can't find it. It's not in there. That's because none of us are actually past tense saved. At the very best, we're being saved. And that is we're giving what the Bible calls the earnest of the spirit, which is a down payment. That's right. It's a down payment of the spirit of God until he comes back to give us the fullness, which is the purchase possession, which is a brand new body. So, uh, to confess with your mouth and all those things, that's a misunderstood scripture. And you can't confess truly until your heart has already been pricked. But we, we read that scripture and understand it in error. I assure you, nobody can confess truly until God has pricked their heart. Because no man can come to him except the spirit drag him in. Ladies and gentlemen out there in Radio Land, the phone lines are wide open at 357-9546. Let's go to the line today and take another caller. Caller, you're on the air. Hello? Hello, welcome. Hey, how you doing, Pastor? Wonderful. Okay, um, I have a question for you. Okay. Uh, um, the question involves um, in the book of uh, Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Okay. Okay, and um, Nebuchadnezzar's dream... He um, he showed the um, empires that would um, be present on the earth and that would be against the Lord and his faithful, right? Okay. Um, my qu my first question is is the um, the uh, Greek Empire, which was the um, I think it was the the waste of bronze. Okay. Where um, all the other captivities. I talked about in the Bible. Where is that Greek captivity in the Bible? All right, let me like, say. Um, 
let, let me clarify what I'm saying. In the Bible, it talks exclusively about the Egyptian captivity of the Israelites it, um, as the head. I mean, my fault, excuse me, not the, uh, the, the Babylonian. Then it goes to the um, Persian, um, and you also have the Roman. Where is that Greek captivity in, in our Bible? Okay, now, so you're, you're basically asking me where, where is that location? You're asking me where, what, what is it today? Yeah, because it seems to be missing out of, out of the Bibles that we read. Okay, now, I, I don't know if this is going to answer your question because I'm somewhat understanding you. But let me just okay. say this, and this is not going to, I'm going to be honest with you, it's probably not going to satisfy what you're asking. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it won't is because I believe that the question you're asking, I've asked similar questions, and so has anybody who has done any research. Mm -hmm. I, I am a firm believer that the church doesn't know what that dream or what Babylonian uh, captivity is and what those places actually mean. I am a firm believer that it's not about physical or natural locations at all. I believe that you're dealing with nothing more, nothing less than spiritual symbols or symbolism. And you okay. have to be able to decode what those things mean. To even understand it, you have to know what Nebuchadnezzar and what his dream represents. It's mm -hmm. not what people think. For, for instance, there are places where I believe America is mentioned in Scripture. Mm -hmm. Okay, Even though there's no America back then, of course, or USA, right. I believe there's prophecy that pinpoints us to a certain place. However, the Bible talks about a natural understanding, and then it talks about a spiritual understanding. Now, mm -hmm. I, 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 I can't get into all of it, but I promise you, if any one of my class uh, members would call, they would tell you that we go over what Nebuchadnezzar and that dream means. And when you find out what that means, you'll understand what these mm -hmm. different captivities and what these different things represent. Nothing in the Bible is what you think. And I'm here right. to tell you, Nebuchadnezzar, if you can remember the dream, do you remember what the dream was about, just basically? Yeah, um, basically, um, he had he was disturbed by this dream that he had of the, of a statue. And um, basically, each each one of those empires was a certain piece of the of the statue. And the end result of the statue was that God and his kingdom was going to hit the statue down below and knock the statue over, and only God's kingdom would be left here on the earth. Now, the reason why I asked you that, because I wanted to make sure you knew a basis of what the story is, and you're exactly right. What I want to just throw out there, and just, man, mm -hmm. I, all I can do is invite everybody out to get the whole gist of it, is that the whole concept is about an image. That's what it's about, a golden mm -hmm image and the image is not some world powers as we thought mm -hmm. okay it's deeper than that the image is within us and the whole idea of why it's called golden see it's so much i need to teach but you have to come out to these classes anytime the bible gives a description location the the mm -hmm. actual material thing is made like it's the golden so and so or it's mm -hmm. brass we just read that to say, okay, he's giving us a description. No, every description has a spiritual meaning. So mm -hmm. if, if the Bible takes time to say it was golden, the Bible is telling us more than just the, what it was made out of. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 I'm trying to figure out where can I even begin. Brother, I'll say this to mm -hmm. you because I can't cheat you. You, you, right. you appear to be one that studies, and I don't mm -hmm. want to cheat you. But I, all I can tell you is you really need to come out and get this information. Now, we're not teaching mm -hmm. that now, but I can answer much more in person when I can go over these things in detail. For instance, whenever you mm -hmm. hear Babylon, people automatically assume the harlot. All these things, they assume that that's the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm here but to tell you. Oh, let, let me tell you, the Catholic Church is a piece of it. Mm -hmm. But so is the Baptist Church. Right. So is the Methodist Church. It's all that, all of that. It's yeah. all of it. And that's what Catholicism uh -huh. even means. You know, mm -hmm. when you're dealing with being Catholic, you're dealing with one world. Now, mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. is not even just stopping there. The right. real truth is there's a beast. For, for instance, mm -hmm. we talked about Daniel, the image of the beast. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. If you go and ask anybody what the beast is, they argue about the different beasts. Uh, some people believe that you, you know about the lion, the leopard, and all these. The, well, le some people say it's Japan, Russia, uh, mm -hmm. and all that. None of those things are true. Mm -hmm, I, I, mm -hmm. All of those things are actually mm -hmm. the same beast at different, mm -hmm. watch this, at different phases. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not going to make sense unless you come out and get the whole, the whole teaching. And, and yeah, so yeah, yeah. You, you when, you, when, when the Bible talks about a beast, this is going to blow you away. I'll let this out the bag. Okay. I'm here to tell you that the beast is always talking about human beings. Right, right. It's never talking about just some nation. It's talking about people. That's mm -hmm. why the Bible says who can count the mystery or the number of the what? The beast. For the it beast, is the right. number of man. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you mean? Why is the number of the man the number of the beast? Mm -hmm. Well, the number is six, six, six. Well, we've mm -hmm. been told that that number is Satan's number. Oh, it's the devil's. No, it's not. Six, six, six is a number, and it's not 666. It's six by itself, six by itself, six by itself, but it's six three times. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it is six, just to give you a little bit more, is because God created man on the sixth day. Right, sixth day, right. But he also created what on the sixth day? The beast. The beast, right. Now, the church told us, and this is a little bit off what you asked, but I have to kind of give you some background for any of it to even begin to make sense. Let me say this. The church told us that we were all created in God's image, right? Mm -hmm. Genesis right. 1, and it goes on to tell us, so God created man in his own image. First of all, mm -hmm. the real scriptures don't say that. The scripture says God is creating man. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there's a great difference because one of them says he's done it. The other one saying he's doing it. Mm. Now watch this. The same church, Billy Graham, T.D. Jakes, and all the rest of them, will tell you God created man in his own image. And I believe that my whole life. You probably read it that way as well. Right. But the truth is this, brother. If mm -hmm. we were already created in God's image, why would God then tell us we need to be converted? <laughs> That's pretty good. Now, now watch this. Why does he spend all of this Bible telling us we need a new heart, we need to be changed, we need to be like him, we need to be converted mm -hmm. if we're already created in his image? Now, well, the, now, now, now that, that, that kind of leads me to ask you then, wouldn't that then prove that we're still under the first covenant and not under the second covenant then? Not quite. Almost. I know why you're thinking that way, but no, sir. Uh -huh. Now, but I, I, at least you're thinking. See, that's. I, I, let me say this. Uh -huh. We're under the image of the beast. Uh huh. <laughs> Watch this. In Ecclesiastes, it says, which is the book of wisdom. It says, God would manifest to us that it's really we ourselves mm -hmm. <laughs> that are beasts. We mm -hmm. are the beasts. Now, yeah. the image that God created us in are the image of beasts, which is why he made us on the sixth day. Now, watch mm -hmm. this. He doesn't finish his work mm -hmm. until, watch this, he rests on what day? On the seventh day. Once he's rest on the seventh day, the number seven is the number of? Completion. What's the next number? Eight. Mm -hmm. which is the new beginning. Right. Now watch this. What happens is God has to work a process, a work in us, mm -hmm. taking us from the first covenant into the second. Yes. Which is law to grace because we could never cross over to be in his image by our own behavior. Mm -hmm. Our behavior could never earn, could never meet the mandate, could never be good enough or righteous. So he takes us to grace, and the Bible says it this way. The law came by Moses, but grace and truth by Jesus Christ. Now watch this. The sixth day is a beastly nature. It's a fleshly nature. It's an Adam nature. It's 
ground. It's red dirt, clay. And mm -hmm. it is a temporary, ephemeral. It is, oh my goodness, it is corruption. However, the book of Romans says that we should be conformed to the image. Now, hold mm -hmm. on, hold on. Conformed to the image? Romans chapter 8 says that. If I right. got to be conformed, that means changed. Mm -hmm. If I was already in God's image, why do I got to be changed <laughs> to his image? Because uh, okay. <laughs> somebody has lied to us. Six, so we're six, still transiting. Like where, where we thought we was already there, you're saying that we're still transiting. No, I'm saying nobody is saved right now. Yeah, yeah it, I like that. That's what, that's what I've been trying to tell people. You know, now, I will say this. Always... He does give some people mm -hmm. a spirit or the seed. And, and I'm mm -hmm. kind of skipping around. In the book of Ephesians, it actually says something that the people don't know. Did you know in the book of Ephesians it says he gives us a down payment of his spirit? And the word what, that he uses, that? You, you know uh, what, Lord, Ephesians, the second chapter, look somewhere around, I think about 14, 15. It says, read that second chapter. It says these words, so you'll find it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He gives us the earnest of the spirit. And if you okay, know what right. earnest is, that's a financial term. Earnest right. is what you use when you're dealing with foreclosures and when you're dealing with mortgages and all these different things. It means down payment. God right. gives us. Let me tell you what the scripture actually says. It says a down payment or earnest until the purchased possession. So in mm -hmm. other words, God gives us a piece until he's finished the work when he will come to get everything that he paid right. for. So Christians don't even understand. First of all, when we say mm -hmm. I'm saved, I'm saved. What you saved from? Right. <laughs> what are you saved from? They don't even know what they're talking about. You're saved right. from sin. You're, but hold on for a minute. I'm still sinning. I'm saved from, watch this, not just sin, but I'm saved from the penalty. Yes. Of sin, which is death. But hold uh -huh. on. I'm still dying. Hold on for a minute. I'm saved. Mm -hmm. What am I saved from? Last but not least, I'm saved from my body. You say, uh -huh. what you mean, my own body? The Bible says that our bodies are the actual reason why we are in bad shape. It's called mm -hmm. flesh. So the Bible says, who shall deliver us from the body of corruption? Right. And then when we go to funerals, they said this corruption shall put on incorruption. This incorruption, mortal right. shall put on immortality because mm -hmm. until we die, none of us can even truly begin to say we are saved. That's right, why right, Jesus right. said a man must give up his life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everybody want to be saved and still live. Right, right, right. But in right. order to be saved, you got to die because death is the tool God uses to give life. That's why he uses the, oh, my God, I feel good today. That's why he uses the symbol of a seed because he said mm -hmm. the seed has to be planted in order to get the harvest. Well, guess right. who the seed is? The seed is us. We've got to mm -hmm. be planted in the ground so that there can be a resurrection. A resurrection is a harvest. Mm -hmm. That's why we used to sing in that grave, getting up morning, fare you well. What, what are you saying? There's going to be a great getting up morning. Now, let me show you another lie that the churches don't know. We used to get in church, and whenever we needed to have a building fund or have somebody come out and volunteer for a program, <laughs> we, we couldn't get nobody to come out. We would say, yes, uh, the, the, the harvest is plentiful. Mm -hmm. But the laborers are few. And what we Early thought that meant is we thought that meant people won't come out and help us. Hard to find good help. That's not <laughs> what it means. When the Bible says the laborers are few, but the harvest is plenty, he's talking about those who are ready to be resurrected and being saved. You see, the mm -hmm. harvest is the great resurrection. The laborers yeah. are the few people who have a down payment of his spirit, which the Bible calls the elect. The mm -hmm. elect are those who God is inside of right now. Right, right, right. Now, all of this will lead you, and I'm going to let you go, but all of this mm -hmm. will lead us to why we need to come out to this class so I can show you how God is going to save the whole wide world. It's so clear in the scriptures. But, brother, okay. Hope, call me anytime, man. Okay, thanks, Pastor. All right.
That's right. I, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, we, listen, we can do some teaching. Don't get it. We can do some teaching, but y- you all need to respond. It's time to come out. And I'm telling you, this class will change your life. If you're a bishop, pastor, preacher, I'm inviting you as my as, as co-laborer. I'm inviting you. Come out and share. I, I, listen, it's going to give you preparation, something to give to your people that's going to change their lives, and it's free of charge. That's the only way I got it free. And I'm giving it to you that way. The only price you will pay, I take that, is that the Bible says, Buy the truth, sell it not. But you don't buy with money. You buy with your life. The only thing God will take in exchange for the truth is your body. Okay? 357-9546. I know we're doing some teaching a little bit today, but great questions from great people. And uh, again, the number is 357-9546 or 622-9546. If you're out there in Radio Land, you need to see why you should come out tonight. Come in your jeans, your T-shirts. It's free of charge. 1570 North Military Highway, the Holiday Inn. No, there is no rapture. The beast is not what you think. I mean, what else have they lied to you about? Call me and ask me. Tell me something else they told you in your church. I used to watch the movie and get all scared. Everybody be afraid. He, the, a thief in the night. He's going to come back. He's going to sneak in and get everybody when they're not looking. Oh, my goodness. The church has made mockery of the true word of God. If you're out there in Radio Land, call me, 357-9546. Let's go to the phone lines and take uh, another caller. Or 622-9546. Caller, you're on the air. Pastor, I hate to be a one who keeps holding up the phone line, but they, they seem to be uh, available at the time. Yes. And I, I wanted to mention that uh, any, any, most of anybody who have been in church, they have seen people of what they was were called, um, they caught up in the spirit. You know, the, um, uh, sometimes, you know, you have some pastors, they put hands on them or whatever, but they, they said they, they're out in the spirit. You're talking about slain in the spirit. Yeah, right. When, when the preacher prays for them or touches them or blows on them like Benny Hinn and they fall out. Right, okay. And then the women come and put little sheets over the women's legs to keep them from being seen. Right. They call it slain in the spirit. Yeah, but uh, uh, back in the day, they used to call, uh, some people used to call it uh, uh, when when they uh, just sitting and, 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 and weaving back and forth or whatever, they said they caught up in the spirit. Okay, but my reason for making this uh, this uh, uh, this point was uh, in in Thessalonians four, where it spoke spoke of the people be caught up in the air. The word air in Thessalonians, if they look it up in the Strong's, it means spirit. atmosphere. Right, and it means air or atmosphere. And the reason why you're saying spirit is because. All spirit world is, is atmosphere and air. That's why the Bible says we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and rulers of the what? Air. Right, but that's another reason they use the uh, rapture scripture. I mean, another scripture that they use for the rapture. They say the people be caught up when Christ comes. But when you, when you caught up in, like I said, I be trying to explain to people, a lot of times you see people in the in the church and they in the spirit, they, uh, they're what people call caught up in the spirit, and they haven't left anywhere. They have... They're sitting right there (laughs) having an experience. That's what they're doing. And you're you're saying something that's very, very good um, if people would stay on that track. I promise you, none of these scriptures mean what people think. And all they have to do is go study. When you come to our classes, thank you so much. We have Strong's, Concordians, Computers, somebody doing research behind the words I'm giving and all that on spot, on, on site. I'm telling you today, ladies and gentlemen, it's a mess. And while we're right there, that brings me to another lie and a demonic thing, slain in the spirit. Did you know it's demonic for you to be slain in the spirit? That's a devilish activity. And I can prove it. 357-9546, call you on the air. Yes, sir. I was reading Mark, I think it was Mark 13, it was talking about a rapture. Well, what, what's that? It was talking about a what? 
it was a rapture uh, in Mark, uh, I want to say chapter 13. Uh, I don't have my Bible with me right now, but I, I believe it was Mark 13. I, I, you, you know what? Don't take this the wrong. Don't take this the wrong way. But I'm going to uh, tell you now. Now I know you're driving or whatever you're doing. You can't get to yep. it. I, I can't tell you what you're talking about because I'm telling you there is no such thing as a rapture in the Bible. I'm telling you that. Okay. Okay. I, I mean, I, I wish I could help you. I, mean, I don't know. I mean, I can. I mean, Mark 13 or nowhere else is there recorded rapture? Is is it ever taught that there would be a rapture? I mean, I'm telling you right now that it's. Uh, if you just do your research, you will see that a theory called a, of a rapture didn't even appear until the 1800s. You just heard another caller call in. They did the research. Right. But if you get it, you call me back, and I'll be glad to deal with it. And thank you so much. All right. I, mean, I don't know. I can't. I can't look for it in an imaginary Bible. It's just not there. And that's the part that's so hard for free people to understand. You know, I, I just don't, I don't get it. I mean, I know that Mark chapter 13 talks about the, 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 uh, the return of Christ coming in the clouds. But if I get five people to call me right now, I'll tell you what the clouds mean. <laughs> and when he comes in the clouds, I'm going to tell you how you messed that up. Let's go to the phone lines. Caller, you're on the air. Hey, how you doing, Pastor? Wonderful. Yes. Welcome. Yes, sir. I was, I was at work yesterday, and I was telling another Christian brother that um, I, I get sort of offended when I see the cross. And um, and I was telling him that it was an instrument used, as, you know, for humiliation. And I said, you know, and, that, and people, you know, they wear these crosses and everything. And, you know, we, you know, as growing up, you know, growing up in the Baptist church, you know, you always, you know, esteem the cross so great and whatnot. And I told him, I said, well, really, you know, as Christians, you know, we, we use it as an idol as worship than, you know, you know, crosses. And I said, well, you know, he said, well, you know, the cross, you know, I know about the blood, you know, and all that stuff. I said, but, you know, well, why is it that people wear crosses as jewelry? You know, they wear it in porn. They wear, you know, it's, it's because the church, because the church world is ignorant and you are one of the few people. And let me tell you, I've been preaching this for years. And that is. Not only is the cross used in haunted, scary movies, used by witches, used by vampires, used by all these different things. If you ever notice, if you see a good, scary movie, there's a cross in there. Yes. If it's so holy, it wouldn't be there. Trust me. Now, the next thing is this. Even worse, we have crucifix, which is, of course, which is really the big deal. Jesus on the cross. And that is an actual satanic symbol. Yes, it's an object, exactly. and the book of Deuteronomy tells us, cursed is a man that yes, hangeth on a, on a tree. tree. Exactly. Anybody who has Jesus on a cross, on their neck, on a picture, on a wall, anybody that has a picture or image of Jesus at all has a cursed demonic object. God hates it. And I'm telling you, 99% of the people that's listening to me and their churches has a picture of Jesus somewhere in it. Exactly. Exactly. It is oh, full man. of the devil. I don't allow it. When you come to the word church, you will not see a picture of Jesus. You will not see Jesus hanging on the cross. Exactly. I've never allowed it. You won't see an American flag. There's a lot of garbage that goes on in the church because the church is, listen, these Christian churches are Catholic. They just don't know it. Yeah, exactly. exactly. That's why they celebrate Christmas. Wow. Christ mass. Wow. Listen, Christ Mass. Anybody that knows what mass, mass is a Catholic observance. Watch this. What else do they separate, ce celebrate? The names of their churches are called St. Paul Baptist Church. Yeah. St. Peter. Why is your church named after a St. Peter? Because that's Catholicism, the worship of dead saints. That's why when you go to churches, they have the burial grounds under in the Catholic churches under the churches. And they worship the dead saints in forgiveness of their sins. That's God never told us name no church St. Peter. Jesus said, upon this rock I build my church. I'm telling you today, brother, you're exactly right. And the preachers don't open their mouth about it. And they all talk about me and blackball me. But I'm trying to tell the people what does say of the Lord. It yeah, is yeah. garbage. Let me tell you something. All these holidays, Easter, it's, yeah, listen to me. They're getting ready to celebrate Easter. Easter is devilish. devilish. It is Catholic. It is, a witch's holiday. It is oh nothing but Catholicism again. 
That's why you have Good Friday. Good Friday, we have fish fries. The fish fries are because the Pope wears a fish guard on his head called the Pope's mitre. His head is the shape of a fish's mouth. And Dagon, which is the fish guard, which is the same fish that's on the back of the car that says Jesus that you get out of the Christian gospel bookstore. Wow. And then you got a bunch of these Christians celebrating St. Patrick's Day today. Exactly. What kind of day? St. Patrick's Day, which is based around Catholicism and gives everybody an excuse to go and get drunk. Pastor, well, how, 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 how do I rescue myself from this? How do I, how do I get out of this system? How You've got to find system? you like believers. Let me tell you something. When I'm on the radio driving all the way to Richmond trying to establish a church in this area and telling the people to come out, only those who really want the truth go come to the word church and our teachings. And I'm telling you today, unless you like to be lied to, you need to come out and share with us so you can be around people that will challenge you and continue you. You're already in the right direction for you to even bring this up. You will never. Can I say something to you, brother? You will never fit into a regular church again. You will never fit into a regular church again. Because you know too much. Don't you, you tell me I'm demonically influenced. You've got to, of course, you're the demon. Yes. Look, how you like this? You're the demon because you don't celebrate the false gods. Yes. You're the demon because you don't celebrate a lie called Good Friday. Yes. Jesus never died on a Good Friday. That's a lie. I, I'm, part of, I'm part of the great fall in the way. You, <laughs> listen, you're part of the elect if you get into the teaching. Brother, let me tell you something. I don't just get over here. You don't listen. Every time, I don't know how long you've been listening to me. We've had a few preachers that challenge me. Every last one of them gets shut down. Every one of them. They can't hold a candle to what we're teaching. And I'm not being arrogant, but when I get up and I say these things, I say them because I can stand the test of time because I'm trusting that God's word is true. Yeah. Brother, I beg you. You need to be around other brothers and sisters that are teaching the whole truth. You don't need to cheat yourself or your family or anyone else that you can have control over any longer. 1570 North Military Highway, the Holiday Inn. Come out and meet us. We, we're going to talk about hell tonight. I'm going to show you how they lied to you about what hell is. I'm going to show you that hell is not the lake of fire and that nobody is burning in a place called hell. And the Bible never taught that. No, now, right the, now, Bible, no. the Bible does teach hell, but it doesn't mean what you think it means. No. And so we're going to show you how God right. is going to save every single person. And all of the Bible is about, brother, the same paganism that taught you about all of these things is the same paganism that taught us about a everlasting burning hell because it's the worship of a God called Molech, which Molech, Molech yeah. believes putting the children in the fire, fire appeases and him. Yes. And I'm getting ready to show you tonight where all of that came from and how the Catholic Church uses that for control and fear. Well, Pastor, how can I get, I mean, I, I work second shift. How, I mean, how can I get in contact or connect? I'm going to give you my personal number, and yes, this sir. is for you and everybody. Text me. Or call me anytime if I can get you. If not, just text me and I'll, I'll try to get back with you. My personal number is 804 245 7009. 804 245 7009. Text me whenever, but please stay in touch. And whenever you can get an evening off, make it to the class. We're trying yes, to establish a church permanently in this area. So pray for us, and I hope that you'll come out and see us when we do. I'm so convinced. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you, you so much. All right. Yes, and I said it's St. Patrick's Day is of the devil. Should nobody who knows Jesus walk around uh, with a green shamrock on? The church is already drunk enough. The Catholic priests are already drunk. Communion is already well overdone. Let's go to the phone lines. Caller, you're on the air. Thank you for tuning in. Hey, Trevor. It's Austin. Welcome. I had a few questions. For one, wasn't it St. Patrick that started the teaching about the, um, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost? Yes. He is, the, he is responsible for pushing the Trinity. And there's a concept called... Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Libination or libna I may be pronouncing it right. Uh, libation. 
And that's what it's all about. Libation, which is uh, drinking and getting drunk and offering that drunkenness to demons. That's what it's all about. You're exactly right. And let me tell you, the Trinity is a lie. And that comes out of paganism, too. I'm glad you're bringing that up. And I got two more questions. One, um, can you talk more about the slain in the spirit? And the other question is, a caller at the beginning of the show is talking about, and Daniel, about the dream. Yes. Uh, someone was telling me that uh, what he saw in the dream is uh, a combination of everything that the church believes from the sun god worship to the Greek of, of heaven and hell and a lot of other things, but I'm not sure what you think uh, along that line. I mean, I'm not under... I, yes, that's all part of Babylonian teaching. Yeah. A- anything that's anti Christ, anti-God, fits under the Babylonian Nebuchadnezzar's image. But, I mean, that's about it on that. Let me say this about slain in the spirit so I can answer your question, Austin, quickly because we're running out of time. And that is this. Um, I can't go through the whole teaching, but if you come out tonight, I will. That is this. Nobody that God ever dealt with in the Bible for good purposes ever fell back. Whenever you read the Bible and people fell back, they were under judgment. They were in sin. Whenever people fail in reverence and out of respect and under the spirit, they fail on their face. You can go and research. Okay. Falling back has always been a sign of demonic rebellion and uh, uh, a sin, disobedience. Got another one? We got to go quickly. 357-9546. Caller, you're on the air. Good afternoon, sir. Hello. Welcome. Isn't it interesting that St. Patrick's Day falls within Lent? And all of these people, <laughs> Catholic people, they're supposed to be observing Lent and sacrificing, giving up, still find a way to get drunk. To get drunk. <laughs> on St. Patrick's Day, right in Lent. Yes. Yes. Uh, strange. It is strange, isn't it? And I just want to say that um, the gentleman from Norfolk that called, and the, the young lady's name is Margaret McDonald. McDonald, okay. Had, Margaret McDonald that had the vision of the rapture. And the preacher that... Um, that was involved in his name was John Irvin. So you did the research too? Yes, sir. Uh oh. Not a research yeah. going on. And nobody and the gentleman is right, nobody preached the doctrine of a rapture before the eighteen thirties. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it. Shout out to my sister. Good to hear from you. People uh-huh. are listen to everybody else out there, y'all are just hanging around with the ignorant. It's time to come out. You deserve better. Better information. This will prepare you for the whole Bible. You won't believe what you've been lied to about. Come on, call me. I got about I got about five minutes. Three five seven ninety five forty six. Quickly, quickly. All right, this is what I want to do. Or six two two nine five four six. Three five seven ninety five forty six or six two two ninety five forty six. Let me say this while I'm waiting. Since we only have five minutes, can I get as many people, if we don't have any questions, that will call me and say, Pastor, I'm listening. I want all those who are participating in Easter, all the preachers that are having Easter egg hunts, I'm going to come back for you next week. All of you all to celebrate Lent and all this other mess, I want them to know that we're spreading the word over the seven cities that is devil worship. And I want as many people that will call and say, I'm listening, to call right now. Call are you on the air. Pastor Rogers of T-Town, you know I'm listening. There it is. There's one. 357-9546. I want the phone lines to explode. 622-9546. Got another caller. Caller, you're on the air. Pastor, for those who believe in the rapture, the B-I-B-L-E is basic instruction. Yes, number there. two. Thank you so much. 357-9546. Call me up. I want the phone lines to go smoking because some of you preachers think you're going to get away with it, but you are not. We must be servants of the truth. Got another caller. Caller, you on the air? Brother Bellman, he's listening. There it is, another one. 357-9546. Come on, give me some callers. I'd I love to hear a first-timer. Come on, first-time caller. You're in your car. You're on your lunch break. You're in the hospital. You're at home. 357-9546. 622-9546. Caller, you on the air? 
Hey, Brother Rob. Pastor Rob, this is Elder Terry McLendon, and I am listening. Welcome. <laughs> Bless you. All right. There it is. Three, five, seven, nine, five, four, six. I'm telling you, you will not be able to escape. The people are tuned in. Six, two, two, nine, five, four, six. The phone line should be smoking right now. We got two minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to text me or call me for more information, I'm telling you, they lied about tithing, they lied about tongues, they lied about salvation, they lied about hell, they lied about heaven, they lied about fasting, they lied about you name it, they lied. This is a class that's going to give it to you straight. We got a caller. Quickly, caller, you're on the air. Pastor, we're listening. Thank you. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the phone lines are going crazy. I told you. I told you. Now, tonight is the night, 1570 North Military Highway, the Holiday Inn, 730, doors open, meet me there. My personal number is 804-245-7009, call you on the air. Let's go. All right, I think we lost him, let's take another call. We got about 30 seconds, time for one last one, no, all right. Again, my personal number is 804 804- Two four five seven zero zero nine. You got ten seconds. Ten seconds. Caller, you're on the air. Pastor Rod, I'm listening. There it is. Thank you. Wonderful broadcast. Bring your people tonight. Bring somebody with you. 1570 North Military Highway, the Holiday Inn. My number is 804-245-7009. See y'all tonight, the Lord willing.